Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for another video. So today we are going to be talking about um, things that I wish that I knew prior to enrolling in WGU. And this video is for those who um, are thinking about enrolling in WGU um, and also students who are currently in WGU in either computer science or software engineering or a related IT major. Um, and I'm just gonna be going over some um, considerations that I wish I had made and then also um, some tips if you've already enrolled in the program um, and that might be useful to those um, who go to schools that are similar to WGU or um, are just computer science students um, just in general. So uh, the first thing that I want to go over is the prestige of the university. So I know for some of you who are thinking about enrolling in WGU, you definitely we all definitely know that WGU is no is no Harvard, you know, it's not it's not MIT, it's not Stanford. And um, for those of you who are concerned about that, whether or not you're already enrolled is um, it's a valid concern. Um, and uh, let me explain why. So prior to going in WGU, I I didn't really I didn't really think of the prestige of the university as a big deal since it is a regionally accredited university just like any other normal university would be. Um, so that wasn't something that necessarily concerned me. You know, I thought, okay, I'll have a bachelor's degree, I can get a job. It's not gonna it's not gonna affect me really that much in the long run, especially if I go to graduate school, which I am. I'm going to Georgia Tech and that's a really prestigious graduate school. So this is not gonna be a long term issue for me. And even if you're not going to graduate school, I don't imagine it to be a long term issue for you guys. It's more about for the first job that you're getting. So when you're fresh out of when you're fresh out of WGU or a similar school with similar you know prestige, um, then it's a little bit harder to get a job, right? Because you don't have much on your resume. You might not even have internship experience on your resume. Um, you just have WGU and your projects, um, maybe some extracurriculars clubs or something like that. Now, when you're applying to um, software engineer jobs um, or related tech jobs, there's a lot of competition. A lot of people from top schools or even just state schools that are well known and people are like, yeah, I know Arizona State University or I know Virginia State or some some school along those lines, right? Those people automatically kind of have a heads up on you, right? Because if you're if you have the same qualifications as them, um, you know, you have a few university projects, maybe an internship, maybe not an internship, and they're looking resume by resume with somebody who went to that school, they're going to pick that person because they know that that person went to a program that's reputable um, and is more well known or maybe that person went to a state school themselves and has a bias towards applicants that are coming from uh, bigger more well-known universities now i'm not saying that this is right or justified um, it's just the reality of the situation i definitely don't think it's fair i honestly think that a lot of people who go to wgu come from non-traditional backgrounds where they were either working in a blue collar job or they weren't able to start school until later because of certain life circumstances. And I often think that in those kind of situations, um, people actually have more motivation to succeed, more drive, more hunger to really make a name for themselves and, and work hard. Um, and so I don't think that it's necessarily fair. It's just, like I said, the reality of the situation. And it's definitely something to consider if you haven't enrolled in the program. Um, but I don't want to discourage you um, from enrolling in the program if you don't have many other options, you know. Um, WGU is a really good school. And, you know, that might just be one small con compared to a lot of the pros, such as the flexibility, the low cost. Um, and Honestly, after you have that first job, it's really just about your experience, not the prestige of the school that you went to. So it's not really going to affect you in the long run. It's just it's just made my job search, I think, a little bit harder for me. Um, okay, so the second point that I want to talk about um, is uh, so don't have an expectation to get a job right away. Um, that was something that I had 
um, when I was enrolling in the program, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to finish this program and I'm going to accelerate. I'm going to finish in a year and a half, which I basically did. Right. And, uh, after that, it's going to be a piece of cake. I'm going to get a job. Um, you know, it might take me a month or something, but I'll get a job for sure. Um, and that wasn't the case. You know, I graduated in the end of February and I have an internship right now, but I don't have a job and I've been looking for a job since. And of course, uh, circumstances right now are a little bit different because of our, the current, the current job market in tech is the worst it's ever been. Um, it's starting to get slightly better, but it's the worst it's ever been really. And the economy is not too good. And, you know, there's the AI boom and a lot of other graduates are graduating now. It's the summer. So that kind of, uh, creates a really competitive environment. Um, so that's, you know, that's at, there's several layers to this, but, um, still like the tech industry ebbs and flows just like any other industry. Uh, and I just, for those of you who are currently in the program or are thinking about enrolling, just have realistic expectations, have a backup plan. Don't quit your job all of a sudden and just bank on being able to finish this and getting a job right away. Chances are it's not going to work out that way. Um, and you know, I hope that you're able to get a job as soon as possible, but it might not be that way. Um, so just have realistic expectations. Um, and you know, a point that I want to bring up that kind of ties this point in the, in the first point together about the prestige of the university is that I had a friend who he got into, he got a job at, um, at a local company that's big here, military contractor. Um, and he didn't have any internship experience like me, had group projects, you know, nothing individual like I did at WGU. Um, and he went to a well-known, you know, local school that is known in my city. Uh, and he got a job, uh, a job offer, um, just a couple months after graduating that school. And I was like surprised. I was like, wait, what? I have so much more on my resume. Like, how is this, how is this even possible? Um, but that kind of helped, helped me to realize like the bias of the, of some of the employers, um, for schools that are already prestigious and, you know, the unfairness of it all, uh, not to be better, you know, cause don't give up, keep trying. Um, but it's just, you have to have realistic expectations, especially coming from like an online program that is a little bit more obscure, um, like WGU, not a lot of people will, not a lot of employers will, will know what that school is. And, you know, I've asked them, um, and they're like, oh no, never heard of it. So, um, just something to keep in mind. Right. And, uh, this third point is geared towards, uh, more geared towards people who are already, um, students, but can still apply if you're going to be enrolling soon. So, uh, what I wish that I did was work on my, like continue to work on my university projects that I made in WGU, right? So some of the courses like software two or your, your mobile app that you make, um, take those seriously and make sure to really do a, a, a good job on them. Don't rush it. Um, and make sure that your code is solid and readable, uh, because you're going to want to continue to improve it after you graduate. And, and the reason I say this is because I've had several interviews, interviews with large companies even, and they've gone over my projects with me and, um, out of the companies that I got feedback from, which was not many of them, but I did get pretty good feedback from a startup company that I interviewed with. And, um, the interview or the feedback was about my project. And, uh, one of the big points was that they're looking for something that has more functionality than just a simple crude, fun uh, crude functionality, right? So, um, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's create, read, update, delete. Um, and it's just the basic functionality for a standalone application, right? That you'll make in WGU and software one and two. Um, and so you need, you need to improve your existing programs to feature something more than that. 
like caching if it's a if it's a web application or um, some API um, that you can incorporate into your application. You know, you could do something with an open API key um, or you know some sort of microservice that you can add to your um, add to your university project to improve it. Um, it really doesn't matter what. Just make sure that it, your 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 project can stand out among others um, because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for somebody who has um, a passion, who has an active GitHub page. Not that that's a necessity, but it is a plus for sure. Um, and someone who really goes above and beyond what most of the other just average middle of the pack um, or bottom of the pack applicants are pushing, which is just basic, just basic applications that are really just not really that impressive. They're not bad, but they're not really, they don't stand out, you know, because um, in reality, you know, after you learn object oriented programming and, and how to code, making making a basic crude app is really not all that hard um, and can be done relatively quickly. So um, try to make yourself stand out um, and that's going to give you a leg up in the in the interview process um, because you're going to have something to talk about um, something to brag about. And, you know, you want to be able to know your projects inside out, um, kind of like go through, um, brainstorm questions that, uh, you think an employer would ask you about your project, uh, and think about how you demonstrate your project to an employer, uh, go through, make sure there's no user facing bugs or issues because that's just a big turnoff. Um, trust me, I had it. I had one. Um, I didn't realize it prior to going into the interview. It was embarrassing for something so simple. Um, so make sure that you have that tuned up and you're ready to go and really just be uh, above and beyond for your, uh, for your projects. And so um, I hope that you know, this is useful information for you. And I have some other videos that go over um, that go over similar tips um, that are useful for people who are thinking about enrolling in WGU or have already enrolled. Um, and it's not, you know, I, I say WGU, but it's really for a lot of just online university programs in computer science or software engineering, um, or just, you know, related programs, um, because a lot of this advice, um, and you know, tips that I'm giving out are applicable to all of it. So, um, if you found this helpful and you know you want you want more content, then please subscribe and like the video. Um, it will really help me out. And yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.